Hello, this is Brian Houle. I am a solutions consultant with Beyond 20, here with another Sharewell version 10 video. Today, I wanna to get my hooks into web hooks. Sharewell version 10 has implemented web hooks, and I am really excited about the possibilities for integrations. For those of you not familiar with web hooks, web hooks are a way for a client system like Sharewell to get data from a remote system. In the past, Sharewell would have to pull the remote system. It's kind of like being on a car trip and the kids are asking the parents in the front seat, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? This polling would have to go on at intervals until a state changed, at which point it would you know, pull down the data and process it. With webhooks, the remote system has a callback URL registered with it. Sharewell provides this URL to the remote system, and when a triggering event happens on the remote system, the remote system pushes data to Sharewell. Very efficient, very cool. So I'm gonna look at how to set that up today. Here I am in the administrator tool for Sharewell version 10, and I'm actually in the browser and mobile settings. I'm gonna go in and you'll see I have a new item here, webhook manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And I've got one set up. Do is do a webhook to Jira. When a project is created in Jira, I want to create an ITPT project in Sharewell. You can apply this in a variety of different ways in Sharewell. Something happens in Jira, you might want to create a problem ticket. You might want to create an incident ticket or a major incident ticket. Really, you can do whatever you want. Today, I'm using ITPT project map to create a webhook. I'm in the webhook manager. The default folder is system, and I've created a subfolder to that called Jira. Within it, I've got a create project webhook. And you can create that just like you can in any manager. You create a webhook, just click the new button, and it will create a new one for you. Let's edit this guy. The anatomy of a webhook looks like this. We have a name. And I'm just using this hyphenated naming convention. You can do anything you want, description. Uh, the provider type is going to be specific to the kind of webhook you're creating. So we have Amazon SNS, Slack, and pretty much everything else is under other. So for this, I'm going to choose other. Uh, next, it wants the endpoint extension. And so I'm kind of keeping my naming similar. So when I put in create project, uh, if I add a, a two, you'll see down here, my full endpoint gets modified. So if I take that out, I could say Fred. You can do whatever you want for your endpoint extension. The webhook manager has this great copy to clipboard item here. So if I copy that, it'll copy it to my clipboard. I can then go ahead and register my uh, full endpoint with my provider. Authentication. For this particular demo, I have my authentication set to none, or you can choose basic. For Jira, I'm going to leave it set to none. And then finally, my action page. Uh, it is asking me to run a one step. And here again, I'm keeping my naming convention fairly consistent, but that is completely optional. I'm setting it my culture for English United States. And uh, I can test my one step. And for my one step, I've created it in the global scope. I've created a webhooks folder and then a Jira subfolder. And within that, I'm going to put all of my Jira one steps. If I had other integrations, I imagine I would you know, have other ones. If I wanted to Trello, I would have Trello, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at my actual one step. And from the webhook call, I want to create a ITPT project business object and then create an integration audit journal on that object. The task now is to take the payload from the webhook and add it to my business objects. So here I'm creating an ITPT project and let's look at how I handle the data itself. So I'll click on my fields page and I'm going to click my pencil icon to only show set fields. So for the description field, 
again, I'm in the ITPT project business object. I'm just going to put some text in there to say that the project was created via webhook from a Jira event. Now, for the ITPT project ID, I want to associate that with the Jira project ID. And you'll notice I have this body token in here. And if I right click in this template space, you'll see I have this new node up here called webhook content, and it's providing the body of my webhook. So this is the payload. The real trick comes in how we modify that token with modifiers. So let's take a look. So I'm gonna right click on my body token, click modifiers. So this is well documented in the Sharewell online documentation. What I've done in this case is I've first created a modifier to interpret the text as JSON. Next, I'm doing a find object. I'm looking for the project object. I captured the output from the web call, but here you can see this is the content of the payload that Jira sends when the event triggers. So the webhook event is project created. I have a project object, project lead object. And now what I'm going to do is use modifiers to walk down that structure. So here I'm finding object project. That takes me to here. And then I want to use JSON path to find the ID, which is here. Now I'm doing the same thing with name, except this time I have a sort of a two-parter here. I'm grabbing the project name for the first part, and then in parentheses after the project name, I want the project key. And so again, I'm going to the project object and I'm finding the key value. And that'll be in the project name. I'm selecting an owned by team. Uh, that's going to be a literal selection. So I have an IT projects team. They're responsible for such things. And owned by is going to be me. What I'm doing here though, is I'm doing a little transformation. So on this modifier, I know that uh, when my display name comes over in Jira, let me show you that again. I'm down here now, so I've got my project. The project has a project lead, and project lead has this display name attribute, but it's coming in as Brian.hool. In Sharewell, I am Brian space hool. So what I'm doing here is simply going to the project object, going down to the project lead object, getting my display name value, and then I'm just taking the first name. So I'm saying, all right, give me the text before the period from the start of the line. And I'm doing the same thing the second time. I just want to get the last name. So I'm saying, give me the text after the period to the end of the line. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to then uh, make sure, uh, well, I don't really need to open the business object, so I'm going to save it. But I also want to create an integration audit journal here, since I want to know what was actually sent in case I have to debug later on. Plus it creates a nice audit trail. So I'm creating a particular kind of journal, again, saving it after, but I'm choosing this journal type of integrations audit. Now, if I look at the fields, I'm doing a similar thing. I'm taking the payload from the webhook and I'm going to add it to the fields in the journal. So for the caller, I could put just Jira, but in this case, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing this self attribute. And that looks like this. So it is an attribute on project object and it is a hyperlink to the project record in Jira. I think what I might do, you know, down the road is on the forum, I could actually add a hyperlink. But uh, for now, I'm just capturing that data. Details. So uh, there are two details here that I'm going to explicitly call out. One is timestamp and one is webhook event. And we saw those earlier. Looks something like that. That's again for debugging purposes. And I'm just calling those out particularly that's completely optional. But for request, I'm actually just dumping the entire payload. I want to dump it into the audit log so that we can see when it was created, what happened, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my one-step setup. So I can go ahead and I'm going to cancel out of that in case I made any stray changes. Now I'll close. The final piece on the webhook setup is this test one step. 
So what this does is it tests this one step based on sample JSON data that you give it. I'm gonna go ahead and paste my data in here so I can select all this good stuff, copy, and I'll paste this into the webhook body. Now I'll click run and what it'll do is the webhook will actually process the data and run the one step. So I'll go ahead and click run. And if everything goes, uh, goes correctly, we'll have success here. If there's an error in the one step, that will be reported in this box as well. So I'm gonna cancel this, cancel this, and uh, close. So now I'm gonna go into my client, and here I've got a, uh, a search queued up for ITPT projects. I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. And here I have the project created off of the webhook. So there's my name, I've got the project name plus the project key. We saw that in the one step when we created that. Here's that uh, literal text that I entered. And I've got my project and my me as the project manager. And then finally, if we go to journals, here is my integration audits journal. So I've got my caller here. We know that it's coming from Jira. And down here is the actual body of the request. This is the payload that I was working from. So I can see all the stuff that went into it and I can verify that yes, what I added to the project object is actually what was sent over. And of course, here is my project ID, which matches my Jira project ID. And of course, here's my success code. Down here are the details. These are the particular data points that I called out. So thanks guys for watching. That was just a quick overview of how to set up a webhook in ShareWell Service Management. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel for more ShareWell videos. Thanks everybody.